Hello and welcome. Well, I have a question for you. What was your favorite children's book when you were growing up? Do you remember the storyline and who the favorite characters were? You know, I think we'd all agree how important it is for children to open their minds and to read books much more often. Also, that their reading skills contribute to their success in school, work, and later on in life. And as much as we are living now in a digitally driven world and will only continue to, even more so with the introduction of stuff like virtual reality and everything else, we never should stop encouraging children to read books. So to talk to us today about the benefits of children reading and how you can encourage your child to have a lifelong love of books, we welcome Welcome our special guest, Katie Moore, the founder of Luxury Read. It's a book subscription box that uh, delivers hand-picked books every month um, from Australian producers. Thank you for joining us. How are you? I'm good, thanks, Rachel. Thank you for having me. This is um, a really, really nice subject to be speaking about. And um, I think it's something that now, as I was just saying, with the introduction of our digital world, that we have to ensure that we are sort of passing down and it's something that we're not going to lose, I think. Um, so it's, yeah, there's lots of things to talk about and expand on on this particular topic. And it's really great. And thank you for joining us. Um, and, you know, there's a, a, a wonderful um, quote that that says you know they say that a child who reads will be an adult who thinks so to begin with I'd love to know what your thoughts are on that particular phrase it's so true there are so many elements um, that contribute when you're reading to a child contribute to how they are when they're grown so many ideas and skills that you don't necessarily see are in a book yes but they're there yeah. Absolutely. I'd love to know initially, what do you think the advantages of children reading books are? How would you describe that maybe? I think it's, um, apart from the obvious getting them off the screens, um, which is always a challenge, even with my two, and I don't let them sit on the screens a lot, um, but just having them sit away from the screens, being able to pay attention to a book, take the story in, feel the pages turn. It's the same as really when you're an adult and you prefer a book, an actual book over a, um, yeah. over a Kindle or one of those. It's just nice to see them sitting there absorbing the story. Um, but I also think uh, it really helps them to develop some critical thinking and um, an emotional maturity uh, that will kind of last them and build through, um, through to adulthood. Yeah. It really sets the good foundations. Absolutely. And I think reading books really helps um, build your child's imagination uh, and increases their vocabulary, as you just said, and helps develop critical and social communication skills that definitely, as you just said, you know, will help prepare them for later on in life. And it um, I think also it helps kids to become more emotionally literate um, with both good and bad emotions. Um, and this, of course, in turn can help them be, um, be more open to talking about things and their feelings later on in life. I don't know. What are your thoughts? Absolutely. Yes. It's, um, I say again that like you don't really realize these things as you're reading them a, a storybook because you kind of just look at it as a storybook, but it's all those little things that um, once you start reading to them frequently and then they start reading to themselves and, and that it's just, it starts to become ingrained and it just becomes second nature. It's just something that they know. And so they're yes. able to better deal with things emotionally as they grow. Yeah. And um, I was reading also, there was a study in the UK by the Institute of Education and it was really quite interesting. And they showed that um, reading for pleasure can increase a child's cognitive development across many areas of education uh, and including a 9.9% .9 advantage in mathematics. So it's not just, um, I guess, English, you know, as a subject per se, it really can help across lots of others. And 9.9 .9 across ma mathematics is, is, is quite a, a big increase. I'd love to know what your thoughts are. Yeah, it's definitely not something that's just... Um, going to benefit them with English and language studies, um, although it absolutely will. Um, because all the cognitive yeah, to, development, all the other stuff that it's sort of helping expand their minds, which is really, really critical, isn't absolutely. it? Absolutely. 
Yeah. yeah. So maths, like they'll be reading a story and um, because they can comprehend that, they can comprehend then like some problem solving going into a mathematics yes. lesson and then that gives them confidence to further their mathematics skills or science skills and everything. So it really just, uh, it just leads, leaves those foundations and, yeah. um, and you can build on those as they grow. And it undoubtedly, I guess, can be fun and imaginative activity as well, which opens up you know, a whole different world uh, in their mind and encourages them to develop language, uh, l- literacy and brain development overall. But sometimes it might just take um, for children to find the right book to really get into reading. So I'd love to know yeah. from your perspective, what tips do you have to help children to find books that they, they personally would like to read? Well, it's not a one size fits all, obviously. And I do find sometimes I see lots of posts go up in reading groups and and with uh, the tween, like kind of late primary school age kids. And they say, you know, they love this series and it has 20 books in it or something. And that's great. Mm -hmm. But what we, what we try and get them to do is not get stuck in a, um, in a set genre or a set um, series. And we put books in front of them that are around a theme and try and break them out of their comfort zone, give them a really good range of, um, uh, illustrations and um and themes and characters and everything so it's a really diverse range of books that we uh that we pick each month for each age group all right great so it's about having that diversity in books and in subjects and and different authors and writing and all of that sort of stuff and and finding what style that they sort of um sort of gravitate to is that what it is yeah, definitely. And I think um, putting the spotlight on different authors, um, I don't actually know how many different nationalities we've put um, a spotlight on um, and and everything. So, for example, last month was our, um, our theme was belonging. And so there was a lot about kind of the Black Lives Matter movement and, and um, immigration and finding your place in the world. Mm -hmm. And so that really kind of um, makes them see different places and different uh, people and makes them appreciate different um, perspectives. And so they can then go too. Yeah. And they can go and explore that further and, and everything. And, yeah, so I try and in my little um, what's in the box cards, I try and uh, include little prompts from the story and say, well, how about we go and you go and do this with your parents or take yourself off and do this little activity that will kind of get them thinking about stuff and uh, and will hopefully foster a love of like that subject and yes. they can go on and read more. And I think now so more so than ever that reading is really started to compete with many screen related activities, as we all know. Um, and in um, my research and in prep for this chat today, I saw that um, it was according to a report conducted by Scholastic, I think for you, Gov. Now, this is a really interesting stat, but 75% of parents... of parents with kids aged 6 to 17 wish that their child would do more things that did not involve screen time. So 75%, that's huge. And this particular study showed kids responded saying that they would read more if they could find more books that they like. So I'd love to know from your perspective, why do you believe it is so important to instill a love of reading books um, in this particular digital age? I think the key is to start young and um, have it just become part of their everyday routine of course they're going to be tempted by screens and everything and I think obviously our generation like we grew up with no screens almost um and so we're forever trying to bring it back towards zero the screen time and um because that's what we knew uh, yeah that's what we knew and I I always had a book in my hand and and um so I think that's the um that's the crux of it. You need to really try and um, instill that early and, you know, eight years old, I think you said the study was from six years old. That's six not too 17. young. To, yeah. yeah. That's not too young to start it. So by getting 
a good range of books in front of them and by especially for the younger ones like sitting with them and reading them and discussing it Mm -hmm. it really does help to um to get them to see that it's a really beneficial activity it's a good bonding activity too like to be able to talk to your kids about what they're reading and um, definitely yeah and the same study also found some other interesting points. Um, just quickly share those with you too. And I'd love to know what you think, but children are most likely to finish books that they pick out themselves. So to read the whole novel um, mm-hmm. and children wanted books that make them laugh um, and parents um, what they want for children in books is the same thing uh, that both parents and, and children actually just wanted something that was sort of you know, obviously positive and actually made them laugh and nearly three quarters of them said that they would read more if that if they could find books like that so anyway I just wanted to know what your thoughts are and if you found the same sort of trend that, that generally kids are sort of wanting sort of positive um, you know novels and that sort of stuff yeah, definitely. I think um, all our all our book selections um, do end like positively. I think that's the um, that's really kind of the concept of a children's book, and they have to have like a good resolution at the end and An underlying um, current to it. Yeah, yeah, and um, and have that lesson in there and and everything. I think um, I really enjoy reading those kind of uplifting, funny books with my children and. Yes. Um, you're right. They're the ones that they do reach for more often. Um, uh, but yeah, I think it's good to have a bit of a mix with um, having some good messages in there as well as it being a bit funny. And, and that's Definitely. where we yeah. kind of make it easy, I guess, having <laughs> um, having us pick them all. <laughs> yeah. Now we published your article and the title is how to encourage a lifelong love of books in your child. So for someone who hasn't yet read the article, can you please tell us um, what the article is about and just what inspired you to write it? Yeah, well, um, we've seen uh, such a movement, especially with COVID and homeschooling and everything. And, and obviously at home, there are all the temptations of screens. And, and, that, and I think um, people have really wanted to get their kids back to basics. You know, you see people out on the weekends now and not so much in Melbourne, but um, <laughs> riding by. <laughs> Nothing happening riding down here bike. at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> um, getting out and getting into the garden and, um, and doing things just as a family unit and that mm-hmm. doesn't involve the digital aspect of things because they really want to come back um, to your basics. And um, so I think having um, that lifelong learning and lifelong love of reading mm-hmm. um, kind of in the future, it's a great goal to, um, to head towards and to start by just um, picking up a book and like I say to my kids before bed I'm like go grab a book that's your bedtime story pop it on your bed and then the earlier in the day that we do it the more lead up there is and yes, especially yeah. if it's a new book they love it yeah um, and but and- uh, Overall, I guess children mimic what they see and, you know, as you mentioned before, what better way to encourage um, a love of reading for, for kids than the, like the whole entire family to sit down and maybe just have a, you know, a group reading time. Everyone's going to sit and, and read their book as they sit on the couch. So I'd, I'd love to know, yeah. you know, from your perspective, how can parents entice their children to read? Do you have any tips at all? Uh, I think picking out the story before bedtime is a really good one. Um, I think chatting to them about what kind of um, things are going on at the moment and like I mentioned with the Black Lives Matter and picking books that really kind of show them in an age-appropriate way how like what's going on in the world around them and trying to to, um, relate it back to current events that they may be exposed to um i think that's really good um and to give what children think- the opportunity maybe to make up what what their mind and what their feelings are about those things as well like using that emotional Definitely. intelligence and actually asking them to self-regulate and you know how do you actually think yeah. about, how do you feel and do you think that as well it sort of gives a conversation yeah. over dinner yeah, definitely. Because if you asked a, a child, 
you know, if they saw someone who was dressed differently or they thought looked different to them in the street, like they wouldn't like, you can't say to them, what did you think about that? You know, it's, it's not something that they would respond to, but if it's in a story, they can say, oh, like this is what happened. And you can say, yeah, isn't that that great that this person came up to this person in the park and, and helped them out. And it's always good to be kind and inclusive and, and stuff like that. Um, So I think that that's um, a really good way of, um, of bringing out conversations and then they'll be keen for the next book that will um, create a discussion around that. Yeah, um, as well. But like you did say, um, it is really good to have a parent read um, alongside them as well. So um, I always get out my books. I've always got a million to read and um, <laughs> you <so would. laughs> I sit there with them and it gets me off my phone too and stops checking emails and um, so yeah, so, so it's good. So what I'm hearing is that, that um, you know, I guess how parents can entice children to read is to keep it current, um, to give children the opportunity to use the subject in the book that's relative and relevant to what's happening in the world um, at that time, Black Lives Matter as an example, give children the opportunity to decide what they think and what they feel about what's happening. Um, and of course, it's all going to be age appropriate depending on the, the, the child as well, but a great opportunity for parents to build a stronger relationship with their children um, and to just open up conversation as well um definitely and so getting back to that study so as we said before it it mentioned that 78 of parents wish their children would read more books for fun Um, so is there anything else that you can maybe suggest um, how parents can um, make reading more fun for their kids is there anything else that you suggest at all Yeah, I think that, um, so what I've started doing recently, um, especially since lockdown, is you make it really, um, especially for the younger kids, mine are five and two, and um, if you make, like, they love making pillow forts and everything, so you pile half a dozen books in a pillow fort. Gorgeous. and, And... and, you know, you have something special um, to eat and like a little snack and, and that. And I think they really love that. So it's a really good way to start it young and they can associate that with a really nice experience, um, which I guess is in, in turn is like our adult boxes that we have. It makes it a nice experience to read. And, as um, well. and I think that will stay with them as they grow older. And how about nostalgia? Um, so, you know, the very first question I asked at the start of um, the chat today was asking an audience, you know, what was your favourite uh, children's book? And do you remember the story? And do you remember the characters? And have you sort of found that um, as we find, even with like toy brands and those types of things, you know, be it from Batman to Transformers for, for the guys and, of course, for the girls, Cabbage Patch or whatever it is, that you obviously want your children to be able to, through the, the lens of nostalgia, to, to sort of experience and share that moment with your, with your child, that they, they're, they're loving the same toys that you did. And the same thing can happen possibly with children's books about what books that we loved as children and having, you know, parents share that same novel with their child through the lens of nostalgia. Um, Have you found that that is another thing that can maybe help parents make um, reading more fun for their kids and explaining that they love to to read that book when they were young? Is that something that um, that you've had an experience with at all? Yeah, absolutely. And um, actually going through and um, finalising selections for um, the kids' boxes, um, I've come across a few that I'm like, oh, that would be so good in that. Like I used to read that. So like like even going back to your Enid Blyton and your Roald Dahl books of course. and, and yeah. everything. And um, yeah, so I think that's a really nice um, thing to do. And they've just um, redone the... Um, reprinted all the babysitters club books ahead of the netflix specials and i just can't wait till my daughter's babysitters club ready so <laughs> well, exactly <laughs> just, just so we can sit you down can have and that, do that moment you can yeah, yeah of course so i mean um what are the i guess some of the the genres that are, are currently in at, at the moment most popular then um for kids we don't focus so much on um 
on what's really current. We just focus on what's important. Um, so it just so happened that like, so our theme last month was belonging and it just so happened that it coincided so beautifully with, um, with, um, COVID and the sense of like displacement there and then also Black Lives Matter. Um, so like next month our uh, for August, our books about um, Into the Garden. So we have um, kind of fostering uh, a love of and an, uh, an awareness of um, being outside, but also books like How to Grow a Friend and, um, oh, and stuff friend. like that. So yeah. it's, um, it, I've, I've structured it mainly around, um, around social issues of acceptance and friendship and family and, um, and being kind and, and things like that rather than a genre based business like our adults boxes. Um, but I do try and get a good mix of classics and, um, new releases and, um, just kind of niche books that you probably haven't come across in your cool. kind of big W and, and everything. So. But yeah. And I'd love to know if you could maybe provide and suggest some reading lists across, um, some age groups. And I've, um, I've actually done some research, um, I guess to, on, on different age groups. So as we sort of go through, I was going to maybe just highlight, I guess, some appropriate tips that are age appropriate to get kids excited about reading. And as I, as I go through the age groups, if you could maybe share some of the, um, the books that you maybe uh, suggest. So we could possibly start with that zero to three um, years of age. Um, the, the things that I have found um, in, in my research that can sort of help children, children to be excited and introduce it to children. So for zero to three, Three, um, just introducing reading as soon as possible and as soon as parents can. Um, that hardcover yeah. books, um, the paper ones may look pretty, but they're not necessarily going to last. So hardcover books for that uh, zero to three age group is probably a little bit better. Um, books yeah. um, with one sentence per page for the zero to three age groups. Um, books yeah. with large, colourful pictures, of course, and you know topics um, such as maybe just one animals or transport. Um, and obviously um, at this age, introducing nursery rhymes. And this is really essential as it does assist children with hearing rhyming words. They're not going to be able to replicate um, the words until prep and, you know, grade one, but, you know, sentences and patterns and new vocabulary is very important for that zero to three. Um, and, and obviously you mentioned at the start, even just getting kids to turn the page um, and, and things like you know, imitating the words of animal sounds and those types of things. Is it, any particular books that stick out for you that you would suggest in a reading list for parents in that zero to three age group at all? Um, yeah, there are a ton. Um, you're right. It's best to keep it um, really simple, basic concepts. Um, and um, the brightly coloured books are um, great for capturing their attention and um, drawing their eye to different things um, around the page. Um, uh, a classic that I'm sure most people have is um, 10 Little Fingers and 10 Little Toes by Mem Fox. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a beautiful book about um, all babies are the same and like just shows wherever you come from. It's, um, it's uh you're all the same really when it boils down to it. And, Beautiful. um, and that's really nice cause they can actually see other babies on the page as well. Um, so yeah, that's definitely a really good one. There's another, um, another Mem Fox one, where's the green sheep. That's definitely a favorite in our house. And, um, and that helps them to, uh, highlight like differences so, so they can see, um, the, the near sheep and the far sheep and the the blue sheep and the red sheep and um and that so they also kind of go into emotions a little bit different personalities and stuff and mm -hmm. um and that's a really good one and um Great. the repetition of the words in that's fantastic but yeah rhyming as well is really important and um that's i think that um yeah, yeah. And even in a picture book, uh, like Nick Bland does an amazing job with um, with his like uh, bear series, the Grumpy Bear and the yep. Hungry Bear. And 
I yeah. think we have them all. <laughs> and as you said before, also making not, um, reading a part of your nightly routine is very important, um, I guess, from, from that from that perspective also moving on to the three to six years of age um sort of age bracket now i guess the concept of print um you know children are going going to be looking more deeply into this as they're sort of heading into primary school but so teaching them what an author and illustrator is teaching them the parts of the book like the cover the blurb um you know the wraparound picture all of those types of things because of course from a digital perspective we don't get to experience these physical things don't do we you know what 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 a book actually feels like to hold so the cover the blurb and the back all of those types of things um continuing nursery rhymes and well-known fairy tales so what um reading lists would you suggest for that three to six year age group um, I think there is, oh, there is such a range and I, I do have to say this is my favorite age group to yeah. explore books with. And, um, I just think there is such an amazing, um, range out there that you can really just really just go to town on it. And, um, I, at the moment we're really loving, um, uh, kind of more, books about uh, the earth. Um, So my daughter is reading a book about Charles Darwin's um, trip around the world, which has, again, beautiful, um, beautiful book uh, illustrations. Pardon? As early as three to six. That's incredible. Yeah, she's um, five um, and uh, it's um, not talking so much about his theories, but but just about the trip that he did and all the animals that he discovered. And, um, oh, and that, so the illustrations are beautiful, but um, she's starting to ask questions about like different animals in different um, countries and, uh, and all about that and like geography. It also touches on that as well. Um, so uh, the other one is lots and I, the author and illustrator escaped me at the moment, but it's, called lots and it talks about how many different species there are and how many we have and haven't even discovered yet and again the illustrations are gorgeous and um so finding a a topic that they're really um drawn to like animals and uh or like you suggested before transport and and all that um they're um really important they're really good books at the moment and um, moving on to the seven to 10 years of age, um, and I, from what I can see, a lot of children struggle the most in this age bracket. And yeah. so generally books with shorter chapters, um, you know, children at yep. this age love to feel older than they are. Um, and they, of course, get very excited about finishing a chapter, <laughs> um, yeah. getting back to funny storylines, kids in this age group also love um you know to to laugh and obviously have something that's going to sort of be quite humorous um and still incorporate uh relationship plots um you know the form of an action a story um you know a good 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 person bad person and comics are a great way to encourage um reluctant readings also so is that something that you've um had much to do and or with luxury read that you actually um promote uh comic books and or or not at all um yeah yeah look i i really think anything that um encourages imagination and um you know comics are still a legitimate um reading material um and in fact one of our august books um is actually written in a comic form it's um it's a beautiful book and um and it just helps to um, it just it's helps to yeah, and really builds um, and supports the story. Yeah, yeah, um, and yeah. of course for that seven to ten, we shouldn't really stop making um, reading part. But it still should be part of their nightly routine. But books such as Definitely. The Chronicles of Narnia for ages eight and up, I hear, are fantastic. And for ages seven to eight, so good. Yeah, and seven to eight, like Charlotte's Web and other chapter books apparently work well as well. Yes, um, yeah. 
they have like the Ando series um, that he um, keeps building on. Um, the oh, the Magic Tree House. Yes. Um, yep. Oh, yeah. That was um, my favorite. Yes. Yeah, and um, yeah. So. Um, and then, the magic faraway tree. That's the one. The, yes. The something yeah. tree house is a more modern one. The something tree house. It's gone. Which my, my niece um, has been reading as well. And that, that's, that's yeah. quite a thick book actually. Um, and, yeah, maybe, so just, and I was just going to move on to the 11 plus um, age group that children at this age love book series. Have you found as they are grow, growing older, they, they, they tend to sort of adapt more to a series of books as opposed to individual books? Uh, no, I find that they um, kind of, uh, as they enter the YA, young adult fiction um, genre and age group, um, so that's where we kind of cut it off. So up until age 12, uh, we have the um, the kids' boxes and then we go into our adult boxes with the YA from 13 plus. Um, yeah. And yeah. um, it's not so much about the series, it's more about uh, the themes that they see in fiction at that age group. So it's talking a bit more about relationships, about uh, finding yourself in a tumultuous time, which is the teenage years. And, yes. <laughs> um, and just dealing with whatever's thrown at you and um, kind of becoming more emotionally mature as well. As well. Um, and I've read that yeah. in uh, for this age group from the eleven plus, the eleven to thirteen, um, in exploring more abstract ideas and world issues. Um, but as you mentioned before, your five year old sort of reading uh, sort of ab- well, not well, not the Darwin's abstract, but you know bigger stuff, but maybe more detail. Yeah. Obviously, as an eleven year old, um, so topics yeah. that would include um, in the environment, um, world, friendships, as you just said before, relationships. Um, all of these things are yeah. really important, but overall i guess the message here is to to not stop reading with children and teens um as well definitely yeah yeah even if you can give them some time um like to themselves uh you know make them a hot chocolate and send them on their way out into a sunny spot in the yard or or whatever i think it's it's um it's probably not popular um amongst their friends but um i think if everyone does it then it would just be fantastic um so to, just to really nurture that love of reading yeah and i guess um other things for parents to consider and i've got a bit of a list here is dyslexia um eye checkups as well um which is important um and confidence um so you know for some children it may be that you have to sort of drop back a level or two um just yep. dis- where their reading level is um and let's face it yes. english isn't the easiest language to read as it's um it isn't always um from um phonetical all the time um so yes. and then some parents also may not be confident readers themselves they may may be struggling themselves but it's something they enjoy doing or want to be doing so um i guess it's important that parents um are obviously a good role model um for their children um and as much as possible just to get off our phones um and reading a newspaper or a book is going to demonstrate this sort of stuff to kids what do you think yeah, even if parents aren't huge readers, I think it's still important that it's a priority for them to instill that in their children. Um, like you said, um, English is a very difficult uh, language. Um, and, you know, even the other day, my daughter was asking, um, how come sail is spelt differently there? Uh, like boat sale um, as opposed to sale like if you make a sale in a shop mm-hmm. and I'm like I'm like yep so that's right and then she was <laughs> saying but isn't sale if something is on sale and I'm like that's also sale yes <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. it is tricky but again starting reading from a young age she's picking that up at five and that will carry through with her so she'll have the context behind that and she'll be able to critically think about 
um, how uh, uh, how to put that in context and um, the different meanings with it, um, which will help language and everything as she grows older and confidence, like you um, like you mentioned before, uh, it really does build confidence. Yeah, and could you tell us a little bit more about Luxury Read? Um, and I guess you know what was the inspiration behind launching the business? Yeah, so we've been. Um, up and running for just over two years and we started just with adults boxes um and it's essentially a new release adult book in the genre of your choice um with a product that uh that showcases a different Australian small business each month. So it might be a face mask, it might be a hot chocolate, it might be um, a nail polish or something, just something to kind of create a nice experience around reading a book to encourage busy women to pick one up every month or every three months. And yep. um, and because it's always on everyone's New Year's resolutions list to read more. And um yeah, and then we kept getting more requests to um, increase genres. So we're now up to seven genres um, to select from. And then it increased to people asking for children's boxes. And I thought with everyone homeschooling, now's our time. People are looking to get back to basics, like I said earlier, and, um, and it's so important to nurture that love of reading. Um, from such a young age. So that's where we launch Luxury Kids. So you offer book uh, boxes tailored for ages zero to three, four to seven and eight to 12, like in those groups that we were just talking about before. Um, and, yes. and, and I'd like to know, did you notice a change in orders during um, sort of lockdown? Has it been sort of a, a bit of a surge? Uh, well, because it's only a newly released product uh, with the kids' boxes, um, we really just went on where the demand was. And if you have people coming into your inbox saying, when are you releasing this kids' box? Um, uh, well, we listened to them um, and uh, and went with that. So it's it's been really well received. And uh, in terms of our existing boxes, like the, our adult boxes, um, there's been a, a huge increase in people getting back to their love of reading. So it's been a really busy and great time. Yes. Well, you know, we've definitely sort of touched on lots of um, – interesting and and crucial sort of points i guess and how to encourage um you know children's passion for for reading and not just that but to start it from a young age it's going to sort of carry them through with all the benefits um if you were to summarize your key messages for anyone watching and or listening what would they be um i think just start any time because it's never too late to pick up a book. It's never too late to encourage um, regular reading. And even for yourself as a parent, um, it's, uh, it's sometimes difficult to, uh, to actually turn off and pick up a book. But um, I think our kids find that too. So it's um, good to have um, that coming from the parents and, and really just just encouraging it day to day. It's, yeah. um, it's never Part too late. And yeah. Yeah. Just incorporate it in your everyday. Wonderful. And if parents have got any other questions for you and, or would like to find out more about Luxury Read, whereabouts can they find you? Yep. We're on Instagram and Facebook at, at Luxury Read and at Luxury Read Kids. And uh, if you hop on our website, luxuryread.com.au, uh, then you and that's can L-U-X-U-R-E-A-D. L-U-X-U-R-E-A-D. And we'll have all of those um, links in the show notes along with the article. Um, Katie, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting to you today and uh, all the very best for the business and um, hope to have a, a chat another time again in the future. We'll take care. Thanks so much, Rachel. You too. Okay, bye. Bye.